How you doing people? Uh, today's episode is going to be a teardown of the 2J so that I can um, basically start mock fitting it in the Z. Alright, so uh, I got the 2J sitting right here, uh, ready to be start being stripped down. Um, some things I'm going to be taking off this engine uh, because I am going NAT. Uh, I don't need the exhaust headers, so I'm going to be taking those off. It'll also make it easier to test fit. So taking the headers off. Uh, I am going hydroelectric power steering, so I'm going to take the power steering pump off. Uh, wiring harness, I'm going to be using a um, Haltech terminated harness, so I won't be needing this one as well. So I'll be taking off the engine harness. And uh, pretty much lower intake as well is going to come off because I'm going to be using an aftermarket uh, intake as well. Engine mounts need to come off. Um, random accessories. Uh, I'll be taking off all these bolts that I have just in place right here um, on the you know bell housing side of the engine. And uh, yeah, so that that's what the 2J is looking like at the moment. Uh, I have the subframe sitting right here. I got to throw this back in real quick and um, You know get it ready for the 2j to be you know, slotted in cutting out this battery box I'm gonna ditch that taking out the brake booster master cylinder clutch master removing all that uh, Finish removing all the extra lines. I don't need like this um, power steering line Because I'm gonna be hydroelectric AN lines as you can see down there um, That's the Hikus and fuel lines I am going to be keeping the brake lines at the moment, just because I don't really want to run all new brake lines. And I think the brake lines are fine, it's just the fuel lines and Hikus that are showing their age. Pretty sure you guys already saw that the harness was out of the car. So I can uh, redo some of the harness stuff on it. So I'm waiting on the fabric wrap to rewrap this harness once I open it up. Uh, so I don't really want to mess with that until I have the, the fabric roll. Uh, I'm not sure the exact name of it. Um, it's not coming to me at the moment, but it's basically a roll of fabric loom tape. And it, it's what usually uh, high performance uh, engine harnesses or any person that does perform, like professional in engine harness wrapping uses because it looks really nice. Made some progress so far. Uh, I took off the exhaust uh, manifolds. That's going to be them right here. You probably chop these guys off and sell the headers. Um, then I got a cat guy that might take these and make a little bit of money off them. That'd be nice. Put some money back towards this project. The engine mount taken off. A couple different random brackets that weren't connected to anything. Obviously, the exhaust manifolds is off. And uh, noticed like back here behind like this, there's like a pocket that's like filled with oil. I'm not sure if that's just like oil blow by that like got caught by the gasket and then got pushed in there and that was actually supposed to go out the exhaust. Um, you know, all the cylinders look dry so maybe the valve stem seals are starting to go. I mean this engine I think has like 100 and 60,000 miles on it, give or take a little less maybe, um, maybe 150, right around there, but uh, yeah, obviously the valve stem steels are going to get replaced, especially when I'm going to go push some boost through this thing, um, you know, I'm putting forged internals into it, so there's no reason to skimp out on the, you know, the seals and whatnot, but yeah, when I pulled the gasket off, all this oil ran down, so. But I looked at like some of the other sides and they seem dry and there's no really like al like oil galleyway that I could see. So I'm thinking that's just blow by and um, it got caught by the gasket and pushed in there. And that's just, you know, over time, that's just what the oil is. But uh, anyway, I'm going to keep going. Definitely needs a good cleaning. Currently, uh, I did have to break out the engine hoist again. Um, but, you know, it makes it easier just to move the thing around a little bit. Uh, got two tires, so it's a little bit higher up. It still has tension, so not that one. It still has tension on the, that, that was a bad example, but this one still has tension and that still has tension, so it's not like fully resting on the tires, it's just there so that the hoist doesn't have to hold all the weight. And it makes it a little bit more sturdier when trying to work on it. But uh, yeah, 
um, coming down this side, I was trying to take off the engine hoist, but I realized that three of the bolts are accessible. The fourth one is behind the oil filter tree, so i got to figure out if I can just take the filter off and reach the bolt. If not, then I'll have to take the whole tree off. It is what it is. Um, but at the moment, I've stepped away from the engine mount and the tree to just simplify everything else. So, uh, been unbolting the lower intake manifold and the engine harness. Most of the stuff is already disconnected. Um, that's for the fuel line. I'll set some stuff, but most stuff is disconnected. I am you know, taking all these connectors off and whatnot, you know, stuff like that. All this stuff down here is disconnected. This stuff is disconnected. Pretty much the harness is ready. I just got to take all the injector harness clips off, which um, this one down here on the knock sensor, or sorry, cam angle position sensor is giving me a little bit of a hard time. But uh, beyond that, um, take these clips off. And then as you see, this is pretty much ready to come off. And then I can uh, undo the coil packs, or the coil wires, and take everything off. And then um, once that's off, finish taking the lower intake manifold off. And my hope is I can fit a wrench down there with an angle on it, and get the last bolt on the uh, engine mount so I don't have to take off the tree. Uh, I still have to take off the power steering pump, because I'm not using that. I decided to keep the AC condenser on for now, just because I would like to have AC, and it makes sense to use the one that came on the 2J. I might uh, try to make my own harness to save a little bit of money, but all these clips are pretty much broken, unfortunately, so I don't know if it's really worth it. The Haltec Terminator harness, at least, if I know if I use that, then, you know, the wiring's good, the clips are good, and I shouldn't have any issues. And maybe I can just sell the harness with the ECU and the key, because it has an immobilizer. Um, to make up a little bit of money and uh that'd be cool same thing i think i told you guys about the cats and try to sell the cats maybe i can make a little money off that that'd be cool and uh yeah i'm gonna keep grinding away at this and hopefully the next update this intake manifold won't be on here anymore okay so a little bit of an update for you guys as you can see a lot is taken off of the engine um it was an ordeal as you can notice there is no oil filter or anything in or oil tree uh, I took that off and I actually made a side video for that. That's going to be on my channel as well in case you guys are doing this video because uh, that's a little, it was a little tricky understanding how to take it off. But then once I figured it out, it's pretty cool. But there was no direct videos online about how to just remove that part. I had to watch a bunch of other videos that just mentioned it. So that's how I figured it out. But anyway, now I have direct access to this last bolt on the engine mount. I can go ahead and take that guy off. But as you can see, no lower intake manifold, um, no more engine wiring harness, oil tree, oil filter. Uh, power steering pump was removed, so it's actually starting to, you know, look like a bare block. Uh, as you can see, all of my parts. These are the wasted spark system with the three coil packs and three coil leads. Uh, lower intake manifold, and then I got the engine harness laid out over here. So that's pretty cool. And uh, now I get to take this engine mount off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the oil tree back on because I'd, you know, like to keep the block sealed up as much as possible. And, uh, I just need to get this out of my way. But I actually am going to throw on the, um, the freed engine mounts while I'm in this area. That way, in case it does collide with the oil tree, I can just put the bolts in first before, you know, putting the tree on because I don't want to take it off again to put it back on and take it off, etc. But anyway, yeah, uh, also starters removed. Got the power steering pump and the starter right there. Um, engine cover, some other bits and pieces. Not sure what this is. I think it's some kind of pressure valve system. Got some uh, debris in the valley. Just, you know, leaves and pieces of plastic and stuff. And you know, this is the side of the other block. Off the side of this block becoming a lot more basic so that's really cool and I can actually throw on my uh, turbo manifold which you guys haven't seen yet uh, it's a t4 turbo manifold and um, I haven't got the intake manifold yet but that's gonna be like the direct you know single straightforward not the GTE one that you know that came factory but the I think it's called a firm engine one where it's you know its own runner is its own uh, injector is, you know, it has its intake with, a, you know, throttle body and whatnot. It'd be pretty cool. 
All right, so after uh, three part runs to get like different sized bolts and whatnot, I actually have some progress to show you guys. Now, um, basically what I, I ha what had happened and why I went so many times is I needed to get some bolts for the engine mounts and I got, you know, eight bolts because apparently the Freed engineering uh, kit doesn't come with engine bolts to actually um, bolt the mounts to the block. I mean, minor, whatever. So I went down there and got eight bolts Seven of them were correct, and one was in the wrong spot that someone else had thrown in there, so I had to go back, swap out that bolt, and then um, when I got back here again, I realized that the Kusko, Kusko, Kusko um, bushings, however you pronounce that, also didn't come with any hardware, as for like nuts to fasten the bushings to the mounts. So if you're doing the swap, get your own bolts. Um, M10 by 1.25 is the thread pitch, in case you're, in case you're curious, but uh, yeah. So as you can see, uh, we have an engine mount with the uh, Cusco bushings, and uh, this is the new hardware I had to go get. Same thing with these. Um, the reason I put washers on is because I didn't want it going too far into the block, uh, especially if you're using like an impact. It's easy to, you know, crack the block by sending bolts that are too large, or not too large, but too deep into it. And yes, too large too, you can only strip up the, the threading, but anyway. So this is the way that uh, Freed recommended you hook up the, the mounts right on the side of the block. And uh, I just followed his video and uh, the instructions that came in the box. Um, I'm going to leave everything loose. As you can see right here, that's loose. This is still loose. These are tight, but not like super tight. Uh, I just, you know, tighten them by hand because I think these are kind of self-explanatory. These need to stay in place, but this can move around a little bit so you can line it up properly when you're lowering the engine into the car and you can come back and zap that down, zap your bottom bolt down, uh, use your wrenches and tighten these guys up a little bit because these are a little loose too. But uh, so that's the driver's side. Come around to the passenger side. Same thing. What I have next to do is uh, actually mock fit it, which I've been looking forward to for a while. And uh, I have the subframe laying down there and like I said the engine's not staying in it's just for mock fit purposes that way I know it clears the subframe before I weld it up uh, I do know I do need to bend these barbs out of the way these are the uh, heater core barbs and you got to be really careful because this is brass and or, or copper and basically they're super delicate and you don't want to break it off of your heater core so Freed recommended getting a socket or an extension that fits perfectly inside the hole right here and then slowly pulling it towards the passenger side in both. Uh, so I'm going to probably do that as well. Um, if I could get a socket or extension in there with something over it just so it doesn't deform or warp it, that would probably be more ideal, just a extra precautioner. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to bend those out of the way. Well, I'm going to get the subframe up in first, then bend those out of the way. I do know I need to hammer the firewall a little bit right on the side, right in here I think it is, for the um, heater core for the 2J. Subframe is back in, steering rack is back in, uh, I can move that jack stand now, and um, yeah, should be pretty much ready to receive the 2J. Um,